this sermon, the days of apostasy, is going to be kind of like, kind of negative in a way, but not negative, but it's just, you know, the way it is. You know, Jesus talked about hell, and, and I got to talk about this, but then next week is going to be a little better. Next week is going to be something related to Jesus and God and the Holy Spirit doesn't want you to go to hell. He's, they're, they're, he's going to try everything possible to put people in your path, to put everything in your heart, to let the Holy Spirit convict you and get you to the point where you are, it's going to be difficult for you to say, I earned hell. It's going to be very difficult. You really have to understand that, that God wants to make it as difficult as possible because he wants everybody to be saved. Amen? Yes. And uh, American Christianity... Is at, a ve- is at a very dangerous place right now. Uh, um, American Christianity is at a point right now where, how can I say it? it? It's acceptable to the world, but not acceptable to God. And we're messing with our feelings too much. It's all about feelings. Well, I don't feel this. I don't feel that. And we're not abiding and we're not living based on what Scripture says. We're actually in a time that we're living in a pure deception. And and America has become like that. The Bible says, my people, people like us, people that are Christians, that once accepted the Lord, my people perish because of lack of knowledge. And so knowledge has to continue to be conveyed and spoken from the pulpits, not, not sermons that are going to be to tickle your ears, but sermons that are going to convict you to walk in the fear of the Lord. And that's what God wants. It's not referring to this information age right now. It's the divine knowledge age that we need to tap into. And a lot of people are calling themselves Christians, but Christians and disciples are not the same thing. Disciples are those that do the will of God. Disciples are those that make Jesus their Lord, not just their Savior. Too many Christians are caught up with their feelings instead of the Word. And we're supposed to be caught up with the Word and not so much of our feelings. They claim that their feelings are from God. And in a way, feelings are from God. But if they contradict the Bible, it doesn't really matter. Sin is sin, and your opinion really doesn't matter. And that's the way it is. And, and, and this is what, when I'm talking about apostasy, I'm talking about believers that have been coming to church, hearing the word, praying, t- even tithing and offering, and all of a sudden sinning deliberately, their heart getting hardened, the Holy Spirit continuing to minister to them, and them basically turning their, their face from God and rejecting Christ. This doctrine that's being teached out there that once saved, always saved. You know, yeah, I say it this way because it's very, very important that I say it right. You cannot lose your salvation, but you can forfeit and reject your salvation. It's not like you're going to lose it because you sinned. No, but if you are a Christian that the Holy Spirit is knocking at your heart and you continue to deliberately sin, you and your choices are going to cause you to possibly uh, leave the presence of God. Because the same way that you accepted him, same way you could reject him. I'm not saying that you're a struggling Christian and all of a sudden you sin and you're going to hell. No, no, that's not what I'm saying. I'm talking about that the Holy Spirit is ministering to you, talking to you, trying to elevate you, not for you not to sin. And then you, your heart gets hardened. And that's why you have witnessed, and I have witnessed, full-grown Christians leaving the faith and becoming agnostic. And becoming atheist. And becoming Buddhist. And how do they get there? Deliberate sinning. Holy Spirit trying to uh, to speak to them. And them not receiving it. Their heart getting hardened. All of a sudden the Bible says God gives them up to a delusion. Meaning a false pretense. A false thing. And all of a sudden what happens is. they, They almost like reject Christ. And those people. They will lose Not lose, they will forfeit their salvation because of that. Now, they they um, they say that I don't think God is in this and God is not in that. God is everywhere. God is everywhere, and and the word says the heart is deceitful above all things, 
And sometimes it's going to deceive you and fool you. Even fool those that are called the elect. Yes. Those that are supposed to be setting the example. Oh Lord, have mercy on us. Amen. But we're talking about here with apostasy and the word uses it as we're going to go into his word now. The word uses it as a, a falling away. Uh, that is rapidly increasing, especially in this young generation with uh, the watered down preachings that are being done and the fleshly living. Let me l illustrate this real quick. We have the Old Testament. And the Old Testament, you know, it started with Adam and Eve. Not Adam and Steve. It started with Noah. And God, God was even ashamed that he made creation. And all of a sudden he wiped away the earth with water. And then the rainbow came up and the rainbow was a promise from God saying, hey, I'm not going to destroy the earth anymore with water. Next time it's going to be fire. So the Noah and the flood, you know the story. All of a sudden here comes Abraham. I'm going to call him Abe for short. He had two kids, Isaac. He had Jacob that later on when he had an encounter with the angel, his name was changed to Israel. So if you read Israel in the Bible, that's the same, same guy. Now along comes Moses. And Moses established what was called the Old Testament law, Ten Commandments. And then, of course, you know, the David and, and, the, and Solomon, and, and all of a sudden they led all the way. Forty-two generations later, led all the way to Jesus. And Jesus, because they couldn't get it right, they couldn't keep the Ten Commandments right, Jesus had to die for our sins. And that blood that was shed on the cross is now good for you to repent from your sinful living and experience freedom in your soul because of what he did and also because of who he is, the Son of God. Now here comes the church age. And the church age starts blossoming. Even the Bible calls it in the book of Acts. It says, and churches were multiplying. They weren't multiplying because they were serving donuts and coffee. They were multiplying because the Holy Spirit and sound doctrine was being teached. Amen. And all of a sudden, the sound doctrine and the, the Holy Spirit was moving in such a way that the church took a peak. And it went, Whoo! and all of a sudden, here comes apostasy. The falling away. And I don't know where we're at. We're here or we're here somewhere, but the bottom line is we're coming down. And when you read the Bible, the Bible says that in the last days, the last days before what? Before the rapture. Okay? In the last days, I will pour out my spirit in that area right there. I will pour out my spirit on all, fre on all flesh. Old people and young people will prophesy, will, they'll see visions, and, and he will pour out your spirit. But here's the contradiction that some people, that, which was called uh, the doctrine of demons, which uh, the Bible talks about. The doctrine of demons, which I'll get to in a second. They also talk about one of the three things that they mainly talk about, well, uh, three doctrine of demons that churches preach, but it's not biblical, is prosperity preaching. That God wants you to be rich. What happens if, if you being rich, you're going to turn your face from God? So that's not a right doctrine teaching, even though there's some pastors and they come on the TV and quite frankly here in Miami as well, that teach about prosperity preaching and it's just about you prospering financially, but the heck with you prospering in your soul and your bodies and everything else. That's a false doctrine. That's a doctrine of demons. There's also another doctrine that talk, that that's the... Ecumeni ecumen I can't even pronounce it. Ecumenism. That's what I mean. And uh, th th that right there is a doctrine where everybody's okay. Hey, come on. Come here, Buddha. Hey, come here, Muslims. Hey, come here, Hindus. Hey, come here, yeah, Catholics. Come here. And we're all one. And you see all these pastors selling out to this doctrine that is supposed to be one when God says separate. 
and do not conform with the patterns in this world. Amen. And so that doctrine of demons tries to come forth and, and, and bring, hey, come on, we're all one. God loves us all. We're all his children. No. The Bible says in John 1, 12, the children are those that do the will of God and are sons and daughters of God. The ones who receive Jesus into their heart and now live for him. So the thing is that sin, it's not that you lose your salvation, like some people say. You don't lose it. Sin plus, I'm talking about habitual sin. What, what the Bible calls in the book of Hebrews, deliberate sin. Deliberate sin will eventually bring hardness of the heart. Of heart. But before your heart gets hardened, in this little area right here, the Holy Spirit is trying to prevent you from doing the wrong thing over and over and over and over. Yesterday we had a leadership class here, which was wonderful, and we talked about that a cigarette smoker does not become a chain smoker and one that can't even leave the habit by just puffing one or two cigarettes into his mouth. No, it's habitually putting cigarettes into his mouth and all of a sudden, boom, he's hooked. The addict, the alcoholic, same thing, boom, you're hooked. Anything, anything pretty much that you do for 21 to 40 days consistently, you get hooked. And it's good to get hooked on Jesus. Come to church consistently, you're going to get hooked on Jesus. Pray consistently, you're going to get hooked on Jesus. Read the word consistently, you're going to get hooked on Jesus. Jesus first over everything, and you're going to get hooked on Jesus. And so what happens is sin, the Holy Spirit is trying to talk to you, but you ignore the voice of the Holy Spirit. You, you want to live life your way. Your heart becomes hardened. All of a sudden the Bible says that you, in 2 Thessalonians, that the, God will give you up a delusion. Meaning like, oh, okay, you're going to fool your own self. And now you lie to yourself. And you become like a lot of Christians have become. Agnostics, atheists, Buddhists. I've seen it. They've gone back to their past and want nothing to do with Jesus. Hey, let me tell you about Jesus. No, man, I'm done with that. I don't want to hear it. And, I, and, and it's not now, it's not that they're sinning, because we all sin. It's now that they have rejected. So this is not losing this is the opposite of what you did over here by accepting what he did at the cross. You accept him. You realize that he, he died for your sins. He went to the tomb. And he resurrected from the dead for your sins. So all of a sudden, the, the church age continues. Let me go back to apostasy. And the Bible says there's going to be a falling away before that. But he, here's the thing that, I, that uh, I was really getting into this this week. The doctrine of demons talks about, you know, the uh, ecumenism movement that, you know, all this one world religion, that's false. But there's a lot of pastors selling out to that. The Bible talks about prosperity preaching. That's also not good as well. Those two things are not right either. That God doesn't want that. And then there's doctrines out there that are going on that are causing the falling away. The prosperity preaching, the, the, that ecumenism uh, movement and all that. So now the Bible says the falling away is going to happen before the rapture. And the, now you're going to have the tribulation. Jesus is coming. This is seven years. Jesus is coming and the second coming, which is different than the rapture. The rapture, he touches the, 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 the clouds. But in the second coming, he touches the earth. He touches Jerusalem, the Mount of Olives. All of a sudden, we're going to live on earth for a thousand years. We're going to be working. We're going to be doing our glorified bodies. Uh, there's going to be some movements here, Come people coming over here. And then comes the new Jerusalem, Amen. which is eternity. Amen. But going to where I'm talking about today, right here, some people are going to, are going to be rejecting Jesus and they're going to have to experience the tribulation before they go into the thousand year. You know, or maybe they, they may not even come back. Who knows? Because it's very challenging once you receive the truth and you have tasted it. Salvation, all of a sudden, to go away from it and come back is very challenging. Let me read to you what 1 Timothy chapter 4 
talks about this. The book of Timothy and Thessalonians are big on this. And we're going to be studying Timothy on Thursday's Bible studies in the month of February. First Timothy 4, it says, Now the Spirit expressly says that in the latter times, we talked about that in the latter times, some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrine of demons, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron. In other words, they have lowered their standards. It's happening right now. The ecumenism system is happening with the prosperity gospel that's being taught. And, and then here's the other thing that I want to share also. The Bible, and you got to break down the Bible here because the question I want to throw out you so you can think about this for a second is this. The falling away is coming. But in the book of Joel, and in the book of Acts, it says, in the last days, God will pour out his, his spirit on all mankind, on all flesh. So my question is, which one is going to be which? Are we going to have a great revival, or are we going to have the pouring of the spirit? Which one is it? Well, the great revival is not biblical. That's also a doctrine of demons that's false. So when people say, no, we're going to have a great revival, and the whole world's going to be saved, and all, all this, all this. Let me teach you what the Bible says. The Bible says that in the end times, that in the falling away period, because those are three of the biggest lies that churches preach. And me as your pastor, your brother in Christ, want to let you know that there isn't going to be no great revival. There isn't going to be no accumulate. Accumul there may be, but I mean, the, the, they may try it. That one world religion, which I think it, 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 it's happening right now. Where, where the, the popes and the, not, not the pope, the pope and the bishops and the cardinals are, are meeting with uh, uh, religious leaders of the Muslim faith and Hindu faith and Buddha's faith and all that. That's also happening. And then the prosperity prayer that you hear a lot. Oh, you know, so $20, you're going to get back 200 and all that prosperity crap. The Bible talks about that we're going to have a falling away. People say, not the Bible, that we're going to have a great revival. That's not true. That's another doctrine of demons. The Bible says that in the latter days, in the apostasy days, that it will be like in the days of Noah. What was it in the days of Noah? Noah was building his ark and building and building and building. How many years did it took Noah to build that ark? 120 years. So imagine it didn't rain. He, this local was building an ark. And people are like, you know, hey, what are you doing? I'm building an ark. For what? The rain. It is not even raining. The Bible says in the latter days, it's going to be like in the days of Noah. No, 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 that ain't true. All that stuff that Pastor Eddie's preach, preaching and all the other pastors are preaching, that, that, that ain't true. That ain't true. It's going to be like in the days of Noah. But then it started raining. We believe in you now, Noah. It's going to be the same thing over here. If falling away, the rapture comes. We believe in you now, Jesus. Well, you're going to have to go through the tribulation. Have mercy on us, Lord. And so we are going to have a great revival here on March 26th and 27th. But that great revival that people says that the whole world is going to be like serving Jesus. It's going to be like in the days of Noah. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but i just rather tell you the truth and you'd be mad at me than tell you a lie. And then later on you're like, hey, you ain't telling me the truth. Thank you, sir. The word in the apostasy end time will resemble the days of the flood. And as we get closer to the return of Jesus Christ, we're going to see this gap. What gap are you talking about, Pastor? The gap between the godly and the ungodly become more and more and more and more apart. Have you guys experiencing it right now? Yes. With your, like you're, you're trying to talk to your family and your friends. You're like, man, these people don't get it. And now they start to not only not get it, now they don't like you. They're going to, they're gonna, the Bible says they're going to, they, 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 they're going to persecute you. And so you might as well tell them the truth now while they're kind of like, you know, they're moldable. But the Bible says that there's going to be a lot of pastors and a lot of churches and a lot of people 
walking with a form of godliness. A form of godliness. In other words, they're compromisers of the word of God. They're going to be, be compromisers of the word of God. But they, their hearts are far away from God. And they continue to get further and further apart from those that are really walking in the true faith like we are. Amen? Amen. So there's going to be a lot of what's called pretenders. That have an outward appearance of godliness. But their inside is far away from God. May God allow us to get the fire of the Holy Spirit. That we may live with the spiritual power of Jesus and not live as hypocrites and not live wishy-washy like, God want, like, like uh, the, the devil wants us to live. There's a lot of facade out there. People pretending well, but their hearts are far away from God. In 1 Corinthians 11, in 1 Corinthians 11 verse 16, you know, and, and as you're going there, you know, this is what I've noticed. Everything is excused. There's a lot of excuses. I can't stand excuses. Everything is excused in the name of love. God loves you, but go sin like hell. Everything is excused in the name of love. But God says, renew your mind. Don't conform yourselves to the pattern of this world. And so we need to understand these false teachings and preachings that are just like, ah, don't worry about it, mijito. Listen, mijito, the sin, the, the, you know, one thing is you, 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 you sin, you come, hey, Father, and forgive me. Okay, it happens. It happened to me too. But it happens to all of us. But another thing is that you continuously do it, and then you get into the risk of your heart possibly being hardened. Oh, that can't happen to you. What makes you think it can't happen to you? Even the Bible says, don't, don't walk so surely that you can't fall. What makes you think? What makes you think that you're different than those other people that all of a sudden have become agnostic, atheists? They, had, they live with the fear. They live with fear instead of the fear of the Lord. They live with all these false doctrines and teachings. All in the name of love. But in 1 Corinthians 11, it says, but if anyone wants to argue about this I simply say that we have no other custom than this and neither do God's other churches but in the following instructions I cannot praise you for it sounds as if more harm than good is done when you meet together first I hear that there are divisions among you when you meet as a church and to some extent I believe it but of course there must be divisions. I mentioned that. It's going to be separation. From us, the godly people, to the worldly people. There's going to be a separation. But of course, there must be division or separation among you so that you who have God's approval, which is us, will be recognized in these latter days. God wants to see who's the sheep and who's the goat. Who's the real deal and who's a pretender? A deception is happening in America. A deception is happening even when people that I've seen that have been baptized in, in the spirit, have been slain in the spirit, have been baptized in water, and all of a sudden they're like, and I go, hey, oh man, no, I'm done with that. No. It's, it's like oh, they have given up completely in their faith. A deception has come into their minds because of disobedience, a sinful heart, and all of a sudden the heart getting stubborn and the heart becoming um, hard and the mind becoming stiff neck. A deception is present with people who say that God approves whatever they want to do. That's false. They, they sin like hell and then they ask God, God, what do you think? God is saying, no, you can't go there. But then they, ellos mismos, them themselves, justify their character traits. They justify and they make excuses for living in sin when God wants them to stop it. 
And then when you're trying to tell them something, they reject correction. And when you're trying to tell them something, they leave the church. When you're trying to tell them something, they get easily offended. And then all of a sudden, you know, they, they even come after and talk bad and criticize and gossip about even the church elects. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. Amen? Amen. And if the people of God don't love absolute truth, if you don't love absolute truth, God says in his word, which I'm going to read in a second, he will allow a strong delusion to come over them. What's a delusion? Check this out. A delusion is a marvelous lie. It's a marvelous lie. You know, it's not like a wicked lie. It's, a, it's not a, a wonderful lie, or it's not like a, a white lie. It's a marvelous lie. In other words, this is a strong lie. It's almost like an oxymoron. Marvelous lie, like jumbo shrimp. You know, <laughs> a marvelous lie is going to come into not, not, not the non-believers, not the believers, sister. The believers are going to have a delusion like, oh, well, I'm going to believe it. The marvelous lie that's going to get them and cause them to turn from what they're walking when they have accepted Jesus to rejecting Jesus. Can you elaborate a little bit more on that, Pastor? I sure will. 2 Thessalonians 2.1. This is powerful what I'm going to read right now. Because this is happening in America and the world right now. And there's another word out there that uh, I don't have time to go into it, but the word is called, oops, the word is called reprobate. 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 Yeah, okay. Reprobate. What does reprobate mean? It means to continually live morally corrupt. Yeah, okay, I'll say it again. In these falling away times, the Bible says that God will give them up to their reprobate minds. Reprobate mind means morally corrupt. Oh, you know... Uh, this is my lover, and, you know, we believe in, in, in this, and, and I was born gay. They have a morally corrupt, and then the b delusion, which means, what does delusion mean? Marvelous lie. This is what's happening right now. Oh, I was born gay. No, 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 no. You weren't born gay. You may have been born, and, and I'm probably the only pastor that will tell you this. You were born with a bent towards possibly homosexualism, lesbianism, bisexualism. You were possibly born with a bent like that, like some of us were born with a little bit of leaning with what our fathers used to be, an alcoholic, uh, a drug addict, uh, a smoker, a womanizer. Uh, you know, we're, we're all born into sin with some type of bent. But God doesn't want you to stay in that bent. He wants you to rise up, go forward, and walk in the will of God, which is obedience. He never wanted anybody, well, you know, um, I'm Cuban, bro, and my family was like this. Oh, no, 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 no. And walk right with the Lord. Well, you know, I was born with a temper. Parent. My mom had a bad temper. I have a bad temper. No, you can change. You can change. God did not create you with a bad temper. You may have, walked, or you may have been born into sin, but you don't supposed to stay in sin. You're supposed to rise up and go from milk to meats. You're supposed to renew your mind. Well, I was born gay. No, you were born with a tendency to live gay because the devil has that in the bloodline of your grandfather, your father, whoever. But God says, if you hang on to me. But the problem with that lifestyle is that a lot of them don't go all in with God. Lord, I don't care if I never get married and if I never have sex with anybody. I'm going to serve you first and you do what you got to do. There's no true repentance. So then they get caught up with what the devil tries to put in their mind, a delusion, a marvelous lie. I was born this way, so I got to stay this way. 
uh, a reprobate mind. Well, I got to be morally corrupt for the rest of, of my life. That's not what God says, and that's not what God wants. I'm going to lose some folks on Facebook, but that's okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Second Thessalonians. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1, the great apostasy. Now, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to him, we ask you not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled, either by spirit or by word or by letter, as if from us, as though the day of Christ had come. Let no one deceive you by any means. For that day, what day, Pastor? The rapture. For that day will not come unless the falling away comes first. In other words, the rapture is not going to come until we have a falling away. Oh, America is going to repent. Oh, the world is going to repent. No, that's not true. It's going to be like in the days of Noah. Now, Rise Up Outreach Church is going to do all that we got to do to bring as many souls that were lost to the kingdom of, of, uh, of light. But we're not going to believe that everybody's going to be saved. No, 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 no. Most are not. And it's going to be a strong delusion, a marvelous lie. A reprobate mind that are going to be uh, morally corrupt. And now all of a sudden, whoa, whoa, the whole world is going to be serving Jesus. No. The Bible says the otherwise. When somebody says, oh, a great revival is coming. Tell them, sir, with all due respect, the falling away is coming first. And the Bible says it's going, to, it's going to be like in the days of Noah. If you want to know how it's going to be, don't get people's opinion. Just read Matthew 24. It talks about it's going to be like in the days of Noah. So where do I left off? Let no one deceive you, for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first. And the man of sin, who's that? The Antichrist, is revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God, of that, or, or that is worship, so that he sits as God, the Antichrist, sitting as God. He's alive already. In the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Do you not remember that when I was still with you, we're going to read it until verse 12. Do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things? Apostle Paul continues to bring it. And now you know what is restraining, that he may be revealed in his own time. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Oh, yeah, we see it already. Yeah. All the executive orders are being signed. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed, the Antichrist, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. Amen. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan, with all power, signs, and lying wonders, marvelous lies, and with all unrighteousness, deception among those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth, absolute truth, that they might be saved. Verse 11. And for this reason, hear me out now. And for this reason, what reason? Everything that I've just finished reading. And for this reason, God, not Satan, God. Okay, you don't want to serve. All right, you want to just do what you want to do. Okay, you don't want to change your mind. You want to live with your reprobate mind. Okay, God, not Satan, will send them a strong delusion that they should believe the lie. Not Satan, not demons, not your cousin. God will give them a strong delusion that they should believe the lie. Se creen la mentira ellos mismos. They believe the lie themselves. In other words, th that's why I don't harden your heart because you start believing the lie. That in verse 12, that they all may be condemned. That means sent to hell. Who, who did not believe the truth 
but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Wow. It's kind of quiet in here. It's kind of quiet in here. Many have an outward appearance, a form of godliness, but their hearts are far away from God. They're living in a facade. They're living in a fake lifestyle. A lot of people pretend well. Have you noticed? Yes. How are you doing this morning? Oh, I'm doing good. No, you're not. You're a chameleon. You come to church. You want to fit in with the crowd, but then you leave the church and you do what you got to do and you don't repent from your sins. You lack spiritual power in your life. And that when you lack Listen, church, when you lack spiritual power and you stop doing the things that have brought you to salvation, eventually what's going to happen is, I don't care who you are, your, your heart is going to get hardened, you're going to believe the lie, and you're going to lower your standards. Lower what standards, pastor? You're going to lower your standards to live however the hell you want to live. You're not living with Jesus as Lord. You're living with how you want to live. And many people right now are asleep. And they're not receiving this. And maybe you watching online or hearing me on the radio. You, um, I'm okay to, to, to receive a difference of opinion, respectfully. But I'll let you know that a lot of churches are not preaching these things. Everything is about Jesus and Jesus. Okay, Jesus is wonderful, but then what? Last week we talked about now what? Okay, you received Jesus, now what? What are you going to do? Are you going to continue to live ignorant? Are you going to continue to live uh, spiritually dead? Are you going to continue to live spiritually illiterate? Biblically illiterate? No, I hope not. With, I hope we can grow, church, to be a church that chases absolute truth with everything that we have. My people are destroyed because of lack of knowledge. You know the word. Pastor, you're not being, you're not being, can you be a little more sensitive, please? Okay, I'm going to preach it, sir. May God show us the truth, even though it goes against our feelings. May God give us the strength to do truth. Even though it goes against the lie that you have believed for many years. That you were born this way. That you're this. That you will never get out of that addiction. That you will never get out of that lifestyle. It, may God show you the truth. Amen. That goes against feelings. That goes against cultures. That goes against traditions. That goes against what you've always believed. God has surrendered you to a delusion. Que tu mismo. You, you believe it yourself. I want you to say this with me. God... Show me, the truth Show me the truth at whatever cost, at whatever cost. in Jesus' name. Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Wow. Help us, Lord Father God. All right. Five ways and what we can do to prepare ourselves for these days right now. We're already in the falling away. The apostasy is maybe there or soon to be there. What can we do? First thing we can do is guard our heart. Guard your heart to avoid being deceived. Be careful what you hear, my brother and my sister. Be careful what you see. Don't compromise truth anymore. And stop making excuses for crying out loud for not living a God-centered life. Stop it with that. Stop living a self-centered life and live a godly life. People are living in sin and they're trying to justify that God approves because he loves us. God is love. He loves me. Yes, he does. But he doesn't approve your lifestyle. He doesn't approve what you're doing. It may be acceptable to the world, but it's not acceptable to him. You gotta watch out for sheep in wolves' clothing. 
<laughs> or should I say it the other way, wolves in sheep's clothing. <laughs> and the, the, the people that have a, what's called a Leviathan spirit, that they twist the word. They distort the word. Rather than teaching the world to conform to Christ, the organized church is conforming to the world. The world is, we're not supposed to conform with the world. We're supposed to conf- renew our minds and, st- and stand apart. The devil is very crafty. He's a very slick man or dude, whatever the heck he is. And, and, uh, he's a snake. He's very crafty. And you want me to tell you something? You, people think that the devil is like a, with a pitchfork and he's out there, you know, trying to, you know, uh, you know uh, with a red suit. and one. No, no, no. The devil is extremely organized. He's extremely strategic. He's extremely patient, waiting for you to just have a little opening, a little crack in the armor, a little crack in the window, a little crack in the door for him to get in. He is very organized. God wants you to resist him so you can have the victory and live free. But hear me out. He's a very organized fallen angel. The one that was in charge of the worship in heaven. Lucifer. Now it's called Satan. He's very organized. And... An organized devil will never be defeated by a church that's disorganized. We need to teach sound doctrine that's organized. We need to be organized with our finances. We need to organize ourselves with our time to be punctual. We need to be organized soldiers. Yes, sir. We're praying for duty, sir. Because a Organized devil will never be defeated by a disorganized church. That's why 422 churches went down in November. I'm, I, you know, like some of them, I'm sure, were, they sh- maybe it shouldn't have happened. I don't know. But a lot of them were probably disorganized. A lot of them experienced the, the COVID and the shutdowns and all that. But I ah, lack of faith. That's another one. A lot of things. But why did we prosper? Because God was with us. And we live by faith. We're organized. We come against him because that. We want things in here in this church to be done with reverence and organized. And when we operate like that, and of course, a spirit of unity or the unity of the spirit. We want to operate like this because when we live like this as one, we're powerful. And no matter what comes out of those gates, we're going to, be def- we're going to defeat them. So help us God. Amen. Somebody shout amen. amen. Hallelujah. Satan... And his satanic powers desire to overthrow our faith. That's why a lot of the falling away, people are, people's faith are dying. They're falling. And all of a sudden what happens? Unbelief creeps in their head. Doubt creeps in their head. And all of a sudden when doubt and unbelief creeps in their head, God sends a strong delusion for them to believe that crap that was formed in their head. And when that happens, the heart is hard, and all of a sudden, people going from to atheism, Buddhism, agnostics, people that were once Christians, you talk to them now, and you're like, well, you know, I, I think the word was written by God, by God but you know what, you know, it was also written by man, and they start believing the lie. Lord, help us. It's not the big thing, like the lion coming out of the gate, rah, trying to bite you, even though the devil's like a roaring lion. Sometimes it's the little foxes that steal the vineyard. It's the little things. It's the little compromises over here that later on get you over here. Nobody starts to become an addict living under the bridge with, a, with you know, smoking, you know, cracking right from the get-go. No. We start with a little bit, a little, a little alcohol, a little weed, all of a sudden, boom, heroin, meth, crack, or whatever. They believe their lie. No, it's not going to happen to me. I'm not going to get caught into that. Lord, help us. Church, stop letting your memory of the past curse the progress of your future. It happened. It happened. You sinned. Let it go. 
Let it go. But as we get closer to the return of Jesus Christ in the rapture that I got there written, we're going to see a huge gap between Christians and non-Christians. Number two, and what can we do to prepare for the days of apostasy? Keep hearing the word of God and increasing in sin. Not continuous sin, increasing in faith and not continuing in sin. Increasing in faith. The blood of Jesus, may, 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 may we grab on to what he did. May we declare that this word is infallible. Amen. That this word is what needs to really be in us. Revelation chapter 2 verse 4. It says, but I have this against you. That you have abandoned the love you had at first. Remember therefore from where you have fallen. Repent and do the works you did at first. If not, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent. And the word repent has become these days offensive. Yeah. Hey, listen, listen, you got to repent from that. Oh, God, don't judge me. I'm not judging you. I'm not saying you're going to hell. That's not my job. But you do need to repent. Even with preachers. Do you hear repenting from the pulpits anymore? Hardly. The truth is, unless we are confronted with our sin, and we confront it, and we repent, we will never be delivered from it. We need to confront our sin and repent. You know, if I were to really do what the old churches over here used to do when they were multiplying in numbers, the leaders would discipline you if you wouldn't give your tithes, if you wouldn't come to church, if you were in sin. I'm a loving pastor compared to how it used to be. In the old days, oh, oh, wait, 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 you were sinning? No, 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 you go on time out for two days. You can't even serve. You can't do this. Yeah, yeah go sit in the back. You know, uh, you can't get bottled waters. You, know, you can't get uh, uh, pretzels, whatever we give out. You're punished. You have an elder of the church. Somebody comes into you and says, hey, listen, uh, you're in sin, and the Holy Spirit told me that you need to repent. Oh, get out of town. No, uh, we, we, we don't do that anymore. Everything is covered in the name of love. Yeah. No, it's okay. It's okay. Uh, uh, yeah. Everything is covered like that. But God, but, so I'm not going to be, I don't, I don't feel comfortable, but if I have to say it, I will. The Spirit tells me so, but this church discipline that used to be in the days that the churches were multiplying doesn't happen anymore. And maybe if it did, people would take it serious. Because when you were a kid, thank God your parents disciplined you. So, some of you needed more discipline, but anyway, that's another story. I just want us that when that time comes, that when that time comes, that Jesus is coming in the rapture. My question to you this morning, church, and those watching online and hearing me on the radio, a few simple words. Is your name registered in heaven? Is your name registered in heaven? Or have you departed from God? Or you need God in another way? Is your name registered in heaven? Because if it's not, you may be caught up with the falling away. Well, in Luke chapter 10, verse 20, it says so. It says, but don't rejoice because evil spirits obey you. Rejoice because your name is registered in heaven. Somebody shout amen. Am I the only one going to heaven? But let us continue, church, to hear absolute truth. Not warm and fuzzy, not warm and fuzzy doctrines or preachings that keep you the same, but absolute truth that bring a conviction, that change you, that transform you, that cause you to turn. Absolute truth, not warm and fuzzy lies or warm and fuzzy preachings that keep you in a spiritual coma. May you receive all that because... The days are coming. Yeah. Oh, it's going to get better. Uh, um, you really think so? You really think so? 
It's not. But uh, it's kind of depressing that pulpits are preaching doctrines that are not aligned to the word, but aligned to filling pews and filling pockets. Shallow, dead, carnal preachings that don't have anything behind and don't prosper the soul. Oh, Lord, help us. Number three, and what can we do in these days of apostasy? Ne never stop doing what's right. Amen. Never. never stop doing what's right. Are we a born again generation or what? I hope so. And we need to continue walking in obedience. Even if we're the only ones in Miami walking in obedience. Noah was trying to build the ark. And the whole, the majority of the world didn't believe him except his family. Doing what's right. I don't know about you, but I, your pastor here, I will continue to preach and teach this word of God. Even if I'm the only one preaching it here from the altar. Uh, they're going to have to put me in prison because I'm convicted to preaching this to the day I die. I'm not going to conform to the patterns of this world. We're not supposed to. We're supposed to be praying people, powerful people. And, and the gospel that the Lord Jesus and his apostles believed in, the gospel that he, they believed in, was a gospel that was preached with power, not cotton candy. Amen. Power. Amen. Not politically correct. Amen. Power that brings transformation, that brings renewing. Power. Not that's popular, but power that brings change, that helps you rise higher. Amen. Absolute word of God. But these days, you know, what's happening is it's kind of embarrassing. And, and it's not everybody, obviously, but it's like these pulpits, you know, uh, they're preaching things here. And, and they're like, how is that going to help you prosper in your soul? Uh, they're, they're preaching something. And all of a sudden, they're, they're, they're clapping like seals. And they're clapping with doctrines that are not going to help prosper your soul. God says, repent. For the time is near. And we need to repent like these souls that were here in the altar. I didn't know if there was going to be one or five or ten. I didn't know. But God has been talking to me all week. Do an altar call with this song right here. And, and I'm sure that those that came to the front, they feel more refreshed now. Because we all, I, I've, I've, I've done this with repentance thousands of times. We need to constantly be repenting. Constantly, constantly, because well, I'm, I'm not talking about repenting that we're not saved. Yeah, we're saved. I'm talking about repenting from behaviors that need to be let go. All right, number four, I got two more. Don't take it personal, number four. Don't take it personal. I'm convinced with, uh, I've done this uh, way too long already, but not as long as some other people have done it for 40, 50 years. The word of God yeah. The word of God will either break your heart or harden your heart. Come on. That's good. What are you going to allow it to do? You're talking to a family member that's lost, and all of a sudden their heart gets hardened. They're like, oh, don't talk to me about that. Yeah. And then another one, you're talking to them the same thing, and oh, I don't know what's happening. The Holy Spirit gets them. And that's what the Holy Spirit does. It will either break your heart or harden your heart. May God use us so that our hearts may be broken for him. In 2 Timothy 3.13 it says, But evil man and impostors will grow worse and worse. Worse and worse to falling away. Deceiving and being deceived. If we are growing in the Lord, church... We're not going to be deceived. If we are coming to church consistently and we're putting God first, we're not going to be deceived. We're going to be deceived when we start believing our lies and God allows us to believe that delusion. But if we're doing the right thing, we need to understand that we're not going to be deceived if we're doing the right thing. What's the right thing? Well, prayer, coming to church, doing the right thing, putting God first. Many will mock preachers in the end days. It's happening now. You post something about God, whatever. Hey, man, can you just keep it, you know, keep it. Even family members, 
and people that at one time will give a kidney for you. Now they won't even give an eyelash for you. The true church of Jesus Christ has always been plagued by apostasy. But nothing like in the days that's going to come. We need to be ready. I'm glad that I'm warning you. Because maybe one day when, when, you're, when you started seeing it, you're like, uh-oh. And carnal tendencies will continue to rise. Mega churches with those uh, prosperity preaching and what uh, superstar charismatic preachers are not going to go down because they're not preaching the word of God. They're promoting themselves over and over and over, but they're not promoting Jesus. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Many preachings, what I call security in sin gospel. Or like one of our sisters, uh, uh, she used to call it seeker-friendly gospel. Listen, thinking that you are eternally secure and not doing the will of God is dangerous grounds. We need to really know that God is with us and continue to teach sound doctrine, not politically correct doctrine. And lastly, as we close, ask for wisdom. Ask for wisdom. Wisdom is the spirit of truth. Whether you believe it or not, the Bible says apostasy will overtake the world. Even to those that are so close, so close to you right now, that at one point they're going to say, hey man, you know, uh, uh, you're already too fanatic. Yeah, you're too radical. The Bible says in the end days, even the elect will be deceived. May God have mercy on us. As God's followers, which we are, those watching online and hearing me on the radio, we must be watchful not to allow diluted teachings that are spiritually dead or secular philosophies to creep up into our sound doctrine and causing us to believe the delusion. Only a love for the truth right here. Not only a love for the truth. Oh, I love the word of God. How many of you love the word of God? Amen. Let me say it again. I'm going to turn around. Ready? How many of you love the word of God? Amen. How many of you promise to do it? Amen. How many? Let, let, let me rephrase the question again. Um, how many of you promise to do it? Raise your hands. How many of you promise to do the will of God? Raise your hands. I got you on record. Let me close. In conclusion, keep hearing the word of God. Keep doing what's right. Let's continue to build each other up as a church. Not talk about each other, criticize each other, gossip each other. Uh, we're not a perfect church. There's some things that you may not like. Well, okay. And no matter what church you go to, there's always going to be a couple things you're not going to like. So, you know, uh, focus on the things that are going right. Focus on progression, not perfection. Yeah. That Jesus movement will continue to go forward in an, the organized church that we are. We're not perfect. But it doesn't matter if you leave this church, you go to the one across the street, the one over there. It doesn't matter. You're going to find something that you don't love. And so, but if you focus on just that, and you're focused on just the problem, that becomes bigger than all the other things that are going well. That becomes the problem. Yesterday in our leadership seminar, we talked about don't focus on perfection. Perfection will frustrate that crap out of you. Focus on progression. Is your life progressing in Christ Jesus? Or are you falling away into that trap? Is your life, is your mind becoming more like Christ? Is your behavior rising higher? Is your attitude more of a reflection of Christ or a reflection of the world? Are you going to rise higher in Christ or are you going to get caught up in the delusion, in the reprobate mind that the enemy is trying to give to not the world, believers, the church? May God Almighty spare us from the delusions that are going to be out there and the lies that are going to be out there, the, the doctrines of demons that are going to be out there, and we may anchor up and believe absolute truth. And not only love the truth, but live in the truth in Christ Jesus.
Thank you for joining us. I pray and hope that tonight's message was well rooted in your soul. You know, this ministry has been given a God-given vision for our community right here in Miami. It's a vision that's going to be called Rise Up Outreach Center that's going to be helping teens with their teenage issues. It's going to be helping relationships that are struggling, uh, people that are struggling with addictions, uh, all kinds of scenario. For more information, just visit our website right now. But what we need is your support for this vision. This vision is going to be costly. It's going to take a lot of manpower. It's going to require a lot of resources. And you know what? We need you. The gospel is free. But in order to advance it requires resources the kingdom of god in order to be impacted further requires people to step up and give requires people to step up and work the information to give is right there on your screen you can also go to the website under donate and give through that channel as well thank you for your support god bless you and i'll see you next thursday